morning so let us start our class today and let us see our schedule So according to our schedule this week uh, and next week we will discuss repetition structures selection structures repetition structures and methods these three in combination are the building blocks of a programming language so if you really want to learn programming language you need to be clear about selection structure repetition structures and method so you understand selection structure structure should be easier than that in our last previous uh, few lectures we discussed selection uh, and we discussed if, 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 else, if, else, if, else, if, else, and also we discuss switch, phase, break. Anyone has any issue on the structures? Okay, still, if you I have any issue, shy, please come to my office or see us. In our graduate uh, assistant, or if you need more help, for instance, if uh, if you understood nothing, is anyone here that understood nothing? Selection structure. So you understood something, right? Okay. So if you understand something, that that should be a starting point. Whatever you understood. There, write program and do practice. While you will be practicing, then you will see that you do some mistake. You will do some mistake, and whenever you will do some mistake, okay, think that be ready, be uh, fair up to yourself. For that, when you do some mistake, you will learn from there. Get panic when you uh, uh, get an error message. Try to understand the error message. Then try to solve it. Do a Google search. I believe if you find a some errors, and if you fix yourself, then ultimately uh, by doing so, you will be learning. Okay, so today we will start with selection statements on a repetition statement, right? Okay. There are mainly three keywords for using repetition while and for sometimes do all I do is always used with while do always uh, followed by while do is do while there is a minor difference between while and do while we will discuss those difference today and then is this one discuss in your uh, one lecture half of a lecture we will go through later but let's do the while loop first okay the one we should use 
repetition statement is to execute sum or, or statements again and again and again time until a certain amount of time so all loop states are controlled by boolean expressions at least one boolean expression this how many the looping will be continued. That depends on a Boolean expression. Uh, looping statement that will determine our exit point. While our do while loops runs undetermined, unknown. So the thing is that if we loop a number of iterations, then how do we exit? Yes, definitely there is a way to exit. We will learn that. And for loop is, on the other hand, is used to run usually a pre-mined no number of times. Sometimes we can convert field for loop like a while loop with the condition so all loops use a initial condition with a starting counter and beginning in a certain state and we'll have a test condition and as long as the test condition uh it remains true the loop will continue okay this is the structure of a while loop this is the easiest is a simple structure while and after while we will use a parenthesis and within the parenthesis will condition this condition this can be a simple condition or it can be a complex condition. But the, this condition will give a result, either or false, nothing else. And as long as this condition is remains true, it will be executing this block of statements. So if you want to write the code then you have to write in while programming languages we use parentheses uh, not parentheses uh, curly breaks or sometimes we use indentation for some languages like python this is the flowchart of a while loop there will be condition evaluated over here the code will be here until the loop is true, then this, this one will be looping. Once the condition is false, it will go outside the loop. Okay. For instance, here, in general, okay, in general, the while loops that it has, like this condition, for instance, this here, counter. Okay. Is a variable counter variable and it must be defined as we know that in order to use a variable we must be must define it counter above this statement or in this statement okay so here this is why initially count equal to zero and then we say while count is then one thousand so it will print counter plus i will not something Okay, so let us do this in in an actual programming language. So 
do it C plus plus today. While loop example one. Uh, this is CPB. CPP means C plus <coughs> plus. Okay, so if we run this program, <coughs> then it, <coughs> so it will print how many times? Yes, and there's no doubt it will print hello world one time. Okay. If I want to, for instance, uh, print hello world more than one time, like for instance, five times or uh, ten times, ten times or thousand, times, then there is a way, the naive way, that I write these statements numbers as I need and then I will run my program but that is this is not a good way to run this program you see that I have written in order to print more than one time I have to write this that many number of times but that is not a good way because it will make our program Lengthy that is difficult to maintain and to understand. So the easiest way that we will use a loop control statement in order to execute this. So in our previous slide, we do have an int counter. Here counter is a variable that we assign initially as one. Okay, say and then while we say counter. My counter variable here is then say let us understand with 10. If we understand with 10, then we will understand with thousand or million. It's easy. Okay, so here okay. So still it is incomplete. Here. So here we see that we have counter equal to one and counter less, less than 10. Okay. It will print hello. Okay, so one more thing that we need to we need to increase or decrease the counter. We'll increase the decrease we can do here within the body. So this is the body of the statement. So here we say counter plus 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 counter. It will not give us a different result at this point. So at this point, what you'll do, it will start counter equal to one and it will say is counter less than 10. Yes, right? So then it will print this, increase counter by one. So then the second phase counter will be two, right? And then it will come here, it will check, is my counter less than two, 10? Yes, right? Two is less than 10, right? So then it will execute this statement again. And it will check, it will increase counter by again one. After second session, the counter will be three. And then when it comes back again, then it will check, is my counter less than 10? That means with three is less than 10. Yes, right? So then it will execute this again. Like after 10 iterations, counter will be 11. So it will check 
whether while 11 is less than 10, which is false, right? We will not execute this statement. We will not execute statement 7 or 8. It will go outside. And then this looping will be terminated. So let us run this program. So how many times we have? One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, so how many times we got? Nine times. We were expecting ten. So there is a minor mistake in my program code. Can anyone please tell me? I did intentional mistake. This is why my output is. I'm, I'm expecting to get this output ten times. But I got nine times. <laughs> so I started from one, and I less than. one to nine right so in what in this case i need to use equal sign okay if i use equal sign then i will get 10 times one two three four five six seven eight nine ten war will you understand this okay war i need to keep zero here at the beginning and less than over here that means zero to nine 10, right? As a human being, we start counting from number 1. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. But in computers and all electronic devices usually start counting from zero. There are some advantages of counting, start counting from zero. Okay? So this will give us result. Now, if we understand then whatever we say, counted is less than 100 or 1000 or million, our program will give us our expected result. This is giving me 100,000. Okay, I can stop it. I can make sure that many numbers. So if you understand this, question okay so now let us see if i give here okay if i give instead of less than i say greater than it will be executing Zero. Okay, let us see. This counter equal to initially zero, right? Then we will be checking while counter gets greater than 10. So initially, my count greater than 10. No, right? So then this statement will not be executed. It will not go inside. Okay, so if it will not give us any result. I'm empty. Okay. So we need to be careful about this condition. Okay. This will state as the starting condition, also ending condition. So if we say greater than 10, then it should be fine, right? And here in this case, instead of counter plus plus, in, uh, incremental operators, prefix, postfix notation, even if we use plus plus counter. Will there be any difference? No. 
In this case, okay, let us understand with five. Only a few numbers, then easier for us to. Right. So even if we say plus plus counter or counter plus plus, so in the prefix or postfix notation, there is, will be no difference. Okay, but if I say counter plus plus equal to. times we will get output any different idea yes three times for zero and then for zero plus two plus two it says Counter equal to plus two. So my initially counter equal to zero, right? Then it will be it will be checking is counter less than five? Yes, zero is less than five, so it will be increment counter by two. Then zero plus two equal to two. Then it will check coming again here. It will come back to line number six again. And it will check is two less than five. Say yes. Then it will execute this statement again, and it will make the counter two plus two equal to four. And it will come back to again here on the while statement, and it will check is four less than five. Say yes, right? It will execute this statement another time. So I got one for zero, one for two, and one for four. So I will get three times, and after that it will make counter equal to four plus two, six. At this position, while counter equal to six, it will come here and it will check while six less than five. That is false. Right? So for while condition, always works for the true value. So it will not work false. Huh? At that turn it will not into the loop, so it will execute only three times. Everybody understand? Anyone has an issue? Okay, so there are three things important in order to execute a while loop. One of these counter variables that must be declared beforehand and the condition that must be true. Okay. The mental mental operation. But for instance, here if we say instead of this, if we say counter minus minus. means I am decreasing counter, counter equal to counter minus one, I'm decreasing counter by one. So initially it was, then I am decreasing by one, negative one, right? Okay, so then can you please tell me how much will be executed? Yes. Looping, looping, looping. I'm in a number of times. Because if when, well, I'm, condition I get while counter less than five, my zero is less than five, then after it will counter negative one. One less than five. Okay. Then after that, it will make negative two. Negative two is less than five. Negative three is less than five, and so on. So if you run this program, it will be done forever. Not forever. Okay, it will be running until certain time. But at certain times, my memory will be full, and at this point, this program will terminate. 
This is that is called a program crash. So, in order to fix this problem, what we can do, there are multiple ways we can do. Here, if we say, as long as my counter is F, for instance, greater than five. Okay. So, if I say greater than five, how many times it will be executed? Then you will say is zero greater than five? Zero greater than five. So then it will not come inside this loop, right? So it has any result. You see that there is no result. Okay, for instance, how can I run this program at least one time? Counter equal to we need to give bigger number greater than five. At least six. For instance. If I give it six, then it will check counter six is greater than five. Yes. So you will ask a question yourself here. A while loop. On the place of a while loop, the compiler will ask a question. That means is counter. That means six greater than five. You said yes, right? Then it will come and execute this statement and it will decrement counter by one. Then counter will be five next time. It goes here and then it will check is five greater than five? No, right? So the second time execute, the program will start. Uh, but you see that I will make a little bit over here on line number six. If I say greater than one, okay. By the way, uh, on our While writing something with x as greater or equal to five, you know, but in computer languages, we do not have this like sign greater or equal, but we say x greater or So we will read as greater or equal. So here it will check my counter greater or equal to five. So can anyone please tell me how many times this will be executing? Anyone else? You will execute one time for six, it will say six greater or equal to five, yes. And you will execute and it will make a counter equal to five. And it will say while is counter greater or equal to five, is five greater or equal to five? Yes, so this will execute another time, one more time, right? And after that, counter will be four. Then it will check, is four greater or equal to five? No. That means if this program is all will be executing two times. Anyone has any questions so far? A question? So this is a block of any programming language. If you understand this, then start from here and do some practice. Okay. But still, if you do not understand this, then you need to spend more time. You can see us or you can go to the tutoring lab or 
now PA or C2 with your friend. You need to be clear concept about this, otherwise, you cannot go forward. If we, there is there is someone that if you are, if you did not understand anything from this class, please send me an email or see me. I'll be waiting for you after my class in my office. Maybe then we will give you some extra time. So this is the simplest one. This is called while loop. Okay. By the way, this one here it it will print also counter value. If we want to make this, for instance, like this, in C++. Okay, so it is printing counter first, second time, five. We say as maybe fifty started from sixty five five to sixty fifty five times. Do some practice like this. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> all of these things is uh Instead of going to slide one by one phase, I discuss all of this. Well, let's think. There is a term called centennial value. The centennial is a special input value that represents the end from the user. Sometimes in, in your program, in, in order to run that, it will in order to tweet or a press type in Q or type in control plus X. That is the termination value or center value that we give a space value in order to terminate it. That is called a linear value. For instance, you will see enter a grade 9999. Nine, nine. It will be it gets 9999. Nine, nine, nine. Okay, I will discuss this through a program. Let us see. Okay. The problem. Let us see what this problem says. Write a program in which, in which you allow user to gauge a secret number between one and ten. You will write a program that whoever is running the program will be asked to gauge a number to ten. For this example, set your Great number to a literal for easy for instance you can secret select number seven. When you are done, think about you can modify the program to allow user to continue to guess until they get it right. That means you will be asked. Uh, number by the user 
we'll be running this program between 1 to 10. And you have a your time number, for instance, 7 in your mind. Until the user press 7, it will be asking, press again. No, you are not. And try again, try again, try again. And once the user will press enter 7, then it will say, congratulations. Yeah, like this is the program. It is a condition. The, although there are multiple conditions here, it will give you a single. With a true or false value. OK, I'm giving you a homework. You will try this program at home, OK? Only this program. You will try this program at home. How many minutes I do have? Three minutes. Okay, we'll we'll do today, but uh, our next lecture we will discuss do while. But in order to understand do while, we need to be clear about while. Okay, if you understand while, then do while is very simple. Okay, I am heading to my office right now. If there is someone that did not understand anything from this class, from this lecture today, please, you can come to see me, okay? Thank you so much.